everybody, and welcome to the Knapsack Files TNF in session, episode 10. Here we go. I am recording this live with a select wonderful group of Patreon supporters here via the power of StreamYard and unlisted links, which of course means if you're watching this video later, there might be some delay in the picture to my voice. I don't understand technology. I have the thing I need. Uh, the camera, the light situation uh, is, uh, is getting better. Uh, we switched the camera angle. I wanted it to seem more like you're looking into a radio station and up my nose with a rubber hose uh, than doing anything else. So that's uh, sort of, uh, some of the stuff that's going on here today as uh, TNF in session always kind of changes. I even got the mic on a different side, which is very uh, different for me. So you can hear that adjustment. Oh, boy, a lot of excuses for me already. Happy to be here with a select group of Patreon supporters. They so make this show real possible. Oh, boy, oh I got to turn that excuse- down, too. We're getting a lot of things going here. <laughs> I've got a little things going here. I need my own TriCaster operator here. Uh, we have got a uh, small but mighty group watching thanks to the power of my Patreon page. They are my uh, executive producer supporters, my producer supporters, my associate producer supporters, and on uh, down to uh, my um, uh, level four supporters. And I appreciate it. What they do is they send me some questions in advance that I will uh, be answering here on the show, and then uh, they get into the live chat. It's an unlisted YouTube link just for them, and that's what is really going on. So we are uh, rocking and rolling. The show is going. That's what we're doing, having a lot of fun. Catchphrases all be damned. Some of the people in uh, chat right now, I can uh, bring them up on the screen. We got uh, Matt Thompson is in here saying, hey, don't mean to spook you, Ken, but I got you playing on my big TV while I work. He 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 he. I'm more spooked by the he 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 he's. Uh, Zach Anderson is there. Says, hey, look, I got moving pictures on my computer box, and I I think in Zach, if you're watching the video here, Zach is actually in a tank top in his profile picture on YouTube, and I think that's brave. Uh, we've got Will McLean here. Uh, hey hey hey. Uh, we got Jonas Bergren here. Uh, Jonas checking in from across the pond. Tamor is here giving me a check for audio and visual quality. Giving me that thumbs up, the all-important thumbs up. There's a lot of people in here. Uh, oh, that was Will. Uh, Django's got a mango is here saying, hey oh. Alice is in here as well. She's saying, he he. Uh, and uh, Pete Rich is saying, Django's here, but that also means... Pete Rich is here, too. So welcome to the program here, the Knapsack Files in session. This is uh, what I love doing. I love connecting uh, directly with all of you out there. Live streams, all the rage these days. Everyone's got a a live stream, and I think that's a good idea, that the fact that the technology has got to this point where we can directly communicate with everybody. We can uh, directly entertain anyone out there. We can uh, directly uh, go direct to consumer and get our brands out there. I think that's an important thing. I think that's a good thing and have a lot of fun. But I love doing this show just to my Patreon supporters and then broadcasting it to the world, then sharing it to the world because they are those that invest in me. Uh, People like Tommy Terry Green, he's here. He says, hey, and uh, I got a name. That's old handsaw to you and me. I love old handsaw's profile picture. It's like the stars. It's a galaxy and just a blank orange head. Uh, which I think should be uh, Django. Uh, Ma- Django's got a mango's uh, picture as well. Uh, so, without further ado, we also might take some phone calls later. Uh, we are going to take some questions live from the audience. But right now, I did want to get into some of the questions pre selected from my Patreon supporters. And uh, this is the uh, first one is uh, it's, a, it's a simple question, it's a direct question, but it's It's world-changing, potentially, Uh, and it's from Andy Ortiz, who I uh, do believe is out uh, in uh, Dallas. Yeah, he is. I I, I remember that. Uh, He says, hey, Ken, a Mellow Mushroom Pizza franchise is opened up in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. What do I order? Hopefully, I can make it out here. Plus, 7-Eleven is headquartered here. Yes, uh, 7-Eleven is my favorite restaurant, though, uh, contrary to popular opinion, which uh, popular opinion that I started – I um, I actually don't uh, uh, historically have not had a lot of uh, 7-Eleven hot food. It's just the prepacked sandwiches. That, that's my uh, meal of choice at 7-Eleven. But Andy's talking about Mellow Mushroom. And Mellow Mushroom, Mellow Mushroom has become this cult favorite around these parts thanks to uh, me, Josh McCoo, and Mark Ellis' experiences 
at the Mellow Mushroom in Tempe, Arizona. Now, Tempe, Scottsdale, Phoenix, kind of all piled in on one another. It's kind of like my hometown of the five cities. It's Grande, Napomo, Oceano, uh, Avila Beach, Shell Beach, Pismo Beach. There might be six. I don't know. But it's called the five cities. Uh, Grove, did I say Grover Beach? You need Grover Beach there. Uh, and um, it's important uh, because, uh, you know, you never know where one of the cities begins or ends, really. Well, actually, you do. The farther you go towards the pier, the more likely you'll see an old grizzled man smoking a cigarette on a bicycle. That's just one of the trademarks. So we went out to Tempe, Arizona. Uh, we we're doing comedy in Phoenix. We golfed in Scottsdale. We had pizza in Tempe. That's where we were staying. And Alice was like, hey, I come here all the time. We got to go to Mellow Mushroom. Now, Mellow Mushroom is a chain restaurant. That's what it is. It's not, nothing grand. And that's what Andy's saying. They're, they're getting one out here in um uh, in dallas fort worth that's what he's saying so yeah um I, I i like chain restaurants i know you probably shouldn't love them too much uh that's fair i can i can take that criticism but i just i've I said before i said it with like even with 7-eleven i like walking into a restaurant and knowing that's what i'm gonna get knowing that everything that i want from city to city is gonna be there I can go to a Chili's in Chattanooga, Tennessee, where Django's got a mangoes there. And he says they, they had a mellow mushroom in Chattanooga, uh, where they get a, where he went to college, and he can say, yeah, he he backs up the quality. Alice says mellow mushrooms are important. Pete Rich says, I don't think we have one in our area. Pete Rich needs to move. So I like walking in, whether it's Dallas, whether it's Chattanooga, Tennessee, whether it's Portland, Oregon, wherever I go. If it's a red robin, I walk in, I know what I'm gonna get. I feel com comfort in that, which is, again, the design of chain restaurants and fast food restaurants. And I am also enjoy I also enjoy a good mom and pop. I enjoy a diner. So my soul is fine. I don't need to justify it to anyone out there. But Mellow Mushroom, Ellis said, hey, we got to go. And they're not a sponsor. They're not a sponsor. OK, but they're great. Will McLean says in chat, got one here in South, South Carolina. It's great. That's simple words. It's great. You don't need to know more than that. Ellis tells uh, Josh and I, it's pizza. And we're like, yeah, yeah, all right. Who doesn't like pizza, all right? Okay, let's do it. I can't explain it. Josh and I have talked about it on the afternoons. We've talked about it with Ellis. I can't explain it. It might have been because we were exhausted after travel, because we are out having fun. But when we went back the second night after our shows, we just, we had to go because the first night was so good. And it's just one of those things. We could go back now. Now, Ellis has been back multiple times. We could go back now and... And it wouldn't be as good. That's, that's you know, it's like a lot of things. Sex for some people. That's It's kind of how it works sometimes. I, I want to go back. I want to go back to this specific one. I do want to try a mellow mushroom in another city. Because, you know, does the quality translate? We know the decor does, but does the quality translate? That's what I want to know. But to Andy's question, to Andy's specific question about what to order at, at mellow mushroom, we kept it pretty simple. I like I like specialty pizzas, uh, and, and, you know, and I don't include Canadian bacon and pineapple in that. Though I do love Canadian bacon and pineapple, and I stand by that. I always will. We're not even going to go down that silly debate route. I always say I'm not going to go down that debate route, and then someone someone slags on pineapple on pizza, and I get angry. I get physically angry. It happens too. Sometimes I'm like, I'm no longer going to get into a debate over the true quality of in and out hamburgers in Los Angeles. People flip for them. I think they're mushy messes. I don't like them at all. But I always say it doesn't matter. That's my journey. That's not your hamburger journey. We all have our own hamburger journey. All right. So if you love in and out, if you travel to California solely to try in and out, God bless you. I'm not going to take that away from you. Never. But then I, I say that to myself. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I'll see someone online either try to defend in and out or someone will attack in and out and then someone will attack the attacker. We'll troll the troll and, I, and I'll defend the first troll, the first in and out attacker. And I tell myself every time, don't do it. All right, but we're talking about food too much and I'm getting distracted, which is something we often do here. What do you order at Mellow Mushroom? As I said, I was starting to say, I like specialty peaches, peach, peaches. I like specialty peaches, but I like specialty pizzas, Andy. But when I'm going to a new spot, I like to keep it simple. Pepperoni doesn't always sit well with me. 
downside of getting older. So I'll go with a mushroom, and it's mellow mushroom, a mushroom and olive. And that's what I went with. Simple. And then that way, too, also, you could really test the true quality of the pie. You could, you have a standard. You have a standard, you know? That's uh, that's what I, you know, that way I can walk into another pizza joint, try their mushroom and olive, and I can say, well, I compare this to Mellow Mushroom. I compare this to the one in New York. It's something you can't do in baseball. You know, Babe Ruth was a great player. So is Mickey Mantle. So is uh, Ken Griffey Jr. You can compare the stats, but there's a lot of different factors, right? So we don't have that with the pizza if you order the same one on the first try. That's part of my theory. Speaking of pizza, woo, speaking of pizza, Valentine's night. I'm pretty proud of ourselves, uh, Grace and I. We wanted a simple Valentine's night. Want to watch a movie. We watched Fighting with my family. I, I, I missed it in the theaters. I just didn't get out to see it despite being a big pro wrestling uh, guy and a, and a fan of, of Paige and a, and a fan of the director and writer Stephen Merchant and Lena Headey, all those people in the cast. Um, we didn't see it. I didn't see it. So we sat down, we watched that, but we made our own pizza. Now, I've made my own pizza before, but we tried something new. Oh, and by the way, as we're talking about pizza, old handsaw, I got a name in chat, says, my pizza, it's on its way now. Uh, so uh, we were making it, making this pizza with cauliflower crust. Trying to introduce a little healthier options into the house. We had some ve <clears throat> vegan pepperoni. And that's a thing. And I'm game. I'm not going to put a kibosh on Grace's health dreams. I'm not going to do that. And clearly I need some. I need some health dreams of my own. We, we went to the store. And we did get some regular mozzarella cheese, some, some pizza sauce from Whole Foods. So it cost $92 just for those two items. And then we, uh, we, we got some basil. We got some uh, this vegan pepperoni. And we uh, had some black olives. Pretty simple. Pretty simple pie. I wasn't sure about the cauliflower crust. I wasn't sure. I've cooked some pizza, DiGiorno, you know, take it on, whatever. Shake and bake, whatever you want to do. There was a there was a place in my hometown called Pizzas to Go. Pizzas to Go. And what will you do? This is this is in the eighties here. And and uh Alice is uh, drooling in chat as uh, as we talk about pizza. Uh, and we got Tim over there talking about someone's Instagram story. Um, oh, talking about, yeah, um, that's right, Grace's. Grace and I both put the pit, pit, uh, pizza picture up. Pizza picture picker. Um, my hometown, there's a place called Movies to Go. And next to Movies to Go was Pizza to Go. What a marketing idea. Movies to Go, you get a VHS tape, you put an order in on uh, uh, Pizza to Go. I think it was called, I think it was called Jake's Take and Bake. Yeah, pizza to Go was the subtitle. Jake, but Jake's Take and Bake was the shout out to Jake's Take and Bake. And you put an order in, you'd go in, yeah, we ordered the large pepperoni and the and the mushroom and all, and they'd hand you two frozen ones and you'd go home and cook it. I don't know how that was any different than delivery, but this was the 80s. Delivery, we hadn't even got to the avoiding the noid yet at this point. I don't know. So, anyways, we uh we were making this pizza. And we had a cauliflower crust. In chat, Jack is saying this. Uh, uh, Zach, Jack, Zach is saying, cauliflower needs to stop trying to be other foods. Normally, I would agree, Zach. But I'll say this. Every time I try a cauliflower-based food item in which the cauliflower is trying to hoodwink all of us into thinking it's something else, I actually enjoy it. Mashed potatoes that are actually mashed cauliflower, I got to tell you, every time, yeah, maybe I don't enjoy as much as mashed potatoes, but I don't. Not a joy. I've got right now in the fridge some fried rice-themed cauliflower rice. We're going to try that. And then this cauliflower crust pizza. And Tamor is backing me on this. as He actually had cauliflower pizza that his younger sister made. It was pretty damn good. He loves it so much. He's swearing. I got to tell you. Some of you are commenting that we did post it on our Instagram stories. We knocked it out of the park. We knocked it out of the park. The cheese melted perfectly. The sauce, we, we dispersed it so well. So well. The basil, great. Next time we're going to add a little cilantro. 
the veggie pepperoni. I don't know if I'd have it all the time on its own, but it, it, it just, it melded into the pizza. You couldn't tell any difference. And my body liked that. And then the cauliflower crust. Little doughy, I want to learn to cook it a little better. But it was really good. Newsflash, some of this healthy stuff is good. Tell 10-year-old me. And because of the cauliflower crust, I had a lot less bread. And then my body was like, <coughs> we like you a lot more right now. Vegan pepperoni, my body was like, we like you a lot more right now. It was overall a good experience. All right. Pete Rich just finished eating dinner, and he's still hungry. Never a good sign. Well, we are talking about food. Tim Morrison says, cauliflower rice is pretty darn good, too. So, Zach Anderson out there in Wisconsin, you might be the problem. You might be the problem. Quick live question coming in right now. Tommy Terry Green says, uh, I have a question, Ken. I know you like Oasis. I would say I love Oasis, and I like it. But taking a step back, did I like the Stone Roses? And taking a step forward, did you like the Arctic, Mon Arctic Monkeys? Um, I do like some of the Arctic mon Monkeys. Not as familiar with them. I do love uh, their take on I Bet You Look Good on the Dance Floor. Stone Roses, uh, their first big album, and they had this big, long gap. They helped launch Britpop. Big uh, songs, what, 92, 93? And then they kind of vanished, uh, Troubles. And that's what you did sometimes as a band. Elastica comes on. Boom. First album, great hit, big hit. Second album, years later, they, they, in fact, they named the second album The Menace because it was just so hard to get done. By the time it came out, came out things were different. So Stone Roses did come out with a, uh, another album eventually after the first big one. It wasn't the same. I did like the Stone Roses, but they had such a small sample size for me at the time when I was getting into it and when I was in radio back then uh, that um, I gravitated towards Oasis and The Verve and those kind of bands. So there you go. Live questions coming in here right now on TNF In Session, live to tape, a lot of fun, a lot of fun doing this. Here, let's go back to Patreon. That was one question. That was one question. Pete Rich has got a question. He says, I just watched the wonderful promo you and Grace cut for the Schmodown. How is that acting alongside her? It looked like you two had fun. Uh, so this is, I don't, I'm going to sound like a know-it-all, and I'm going to, Pete, are you in chat? You're still in chat, right? Um, oh, old hand saws pizza um, has arrived. The doorbell has rung. Um, that was not a promo. That was a scene. Uh, not a skit. It was a scene. Um, uh, the term cut a promo would refer to pre-match, post-match, in-ring, that kind of thing. That's the old wrestler in me coming out. Pete, know that you're a better human than me, just so we're clear. Uh, but he's talking about that scene. Pete says, first he says, yes, sir. Then he says, my bad, LOL, which means he's laughing at me, as he should. No. Um, yeah, it was fun. Uh, yeah, uh, look, here's the deal. Uh, Grace has uh, long been a professional actor and has long been an actor. Started like two or three. Uh, dominated local theater, musical theater, um, was touring theater, went to college to study it, has her degree in that stuff. Uh, um, uh, top of her class, uh, just not just in acting, but in a lot of things. She's smarter than I am, clearly. And then uh, been in Hollywood for, gosh, coming up on uh, six, seven, eight years or so. Uh, and uh, works regularly. Um, see her in a lot of great shows. So she is an actor. True and true. True it true. Um, I'm not an actor. I have fun. I've told the story before. I thought I was going to be an actor. I thought it was going to be a sketch actor. And then I was in the middle of a sketch with Kristen Wiig uh, on stage at the Groundlings. And she took a line that I wrote that wasn't necessarily a, a joke and turned it into the biggest laugh of the scene. And on stage, and there's video of this I have, on stage, you just see my body go, oh, yeah, I'm not going to be an actor. I can't do that. That was impressive. So... I just try to keep up with Grace when I'm in scenes. And, and Christian loves doing that. Loves putting us in scenes, and, and he loves having her around for the scenes. Um, a lot of great performers in the Schmodown, but when it comes to acting, she's she's one of the best around, not just in Schmodown, but in, in, uh, in anything she does. So, yeah, as terms of that Schmodown scene, it was fun. It was fun because I'm just trying to keep up. Just trying to keep up. You know? So, great question, Pete. Great question, Pete. Jason Humphreys, The Hump, 
the hump. He's out there in the UK. And he wrecked. I don't know if he's in. Did the hump make it in? He was going to try to join. The hump, are you watching? Jason, are you there? Um, reason I ask is uh, I think it's like 11 p.m. out there. Tommy Terry Green's out in the UK. It's about 11, right? I'm recording this at 3.22 at the time of uh, this recording. Um, uh, what was it? Oh, the hump, the hump, the hump's got this question here. Do you think I have, uh, he's asking me, do you think you have an obsessive personality? You take deep dives on Star Wars and Game of Thrones more than the average fan, but ignore similar genre shows. What would it take for you to invest your time and effort on a new film or television series? So, fair question. The hump is still there. All right. The hump is in chat. Look at that. Fair question, Jason. Fair question. I think I think I get obsessive about the things I love. Um, I love baseball, but there was a point where I was really obsessive about baseball, and it's and it's slowly getting back to that, even with some of the re recent controversies. Actually, with the recent controversies, the cheating scandal and everything, I'm actually even more excited for baseball. I think it's going to be a fun season. I'm going to write about that this weekend for Flag Sports. Um, but yeah, I get it. Beatles, Oasis, uh, just music in the 90s overall. Uh, Star Wars, and Star Wars has... You know, the different parts of my life has been either something I enjoyed or something I was so into. Uh, I was always into it, but, you know, there, there, you know, there were some years where I wasn't digging in every day. Um, and uh, Game of Thrones and everything. So I don't know, Jason. I just always have a feeling. I have a feeling that I know I like it. And it's not a preconceived notion. I just know it's spiritual. The Witcher, for example. We'll watch the pilot of The Witcher. There was nothing in that that made me think this was a bad show or a show I wouldn't want to watch. I just know it's something I wasn't going to be interested in. I haven't watched anything more than the pilot. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is another reason. Um, another thing uh, Jason reminded me. Thank you for reminding me. Um, I'm sure I think we're having some, uh, as we broadcast live, we're having some uh, internet problems. We're always going to have internet problems here. Might get a range extender. We already have one in the house. We have we, Burbank as Bur, people don't believe Burbank has horrible internet. Los Angeles has horrible internet just overall, uh, but Burbank's its own city. Um, so I just know. Oh, one of my lights just went out. There we go. I forgot to charge my lights before I came on. You're gonna have to deal with it, live audience in the in the video. Um, so I just know. I just know that Witcher wasn't for me. Westworld. I thought Westworld would be for me. Oh, I'm all... Uh, ooh, uh, wait, wait, no. I was out by the time the opening song played, which is Raman Shawadi, Game of Thrones. He's great. He's great. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what it would take. I just have a feeling. I have a feeling. Uh, and then we got uh, some baseball talk. Uh, Django says, strip that title. Pete Rich agrees. Baseball season's going to be really interesting, super interesting. Zach Anderson's reminding us. Spring training games on Sunday. Yeah, I'll, I'll write more about the uh, what's going on. If anyone's curious of what I think, don't be. Um, I just have a kind of funny view of it. I don't think the Astros should have their title strip. I actually agree with Rod Man Rob Manford, the MLB commissioner, when he says, when 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 does it stop? We have precedences for a reason. I'm not always a precedence guy, but we have a reason. We have a reason, and we have standards, and we got to we got to see. And was there anything in this scenario that would make me go against the previous disciplinary standards? And I don't know where you stop. I think you could take away the Astros title, and I think I would be understand understandable of that. Uh, you're probably going to end up. You need to take the Red Sox title, and then you need to go back to 2000, and and then you probably need to take the Yankees title. Um, you probably need to go to 1990, take the A's title. Uh, why don't you just go ahead and take most of the titles away from the 70s and 60s and 50s for all the player players uh, who were on greenies? Uh, why don't you go back to uh, when baseball was segregated and take the titles from the teams that refused to play people of color? Like, I, I don't know when it stops. And I do believe, I do believe the, you know, the Astros – did not win under under fair circumstances. So, but what do you do? Do you do you suspend all the players who are on the roster in 2017 for the Astros? No matter where they play now, 50 games, 80 games a year. 
Lifetime ban for Altuve. Now you have a lot of his teammates going, nah, actually, he fought against it. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I, I just think, uh, oh, another light, another light died. Here we go. Um, I think it's, it's complicated. I think immunity was needed for some of the players to come forward and actually be honest. I think that's part of it too. And don't hold me to this because I don't know. Cause I don't know, but I do not believe in my heart that this is it. And that the Astros and Red Sox are the only team who did this kind of thing. And I still think Manfred might know that. And so what are you going to do? Suspend the entire rosters of, of eight teams? You know, we'll see. We'll see. But, and I agree, Lauren Romo's here. Hey, Lauren. She says, it's probably the first time in a while I'm interested in, uh, to, in the MLB to see what unfolds. Yeah, controversy creates cash. Pro wrestling is life. Life is a work. I sell the sh those T-shirts on my T Public page. Life is a work. The players didn't want to come out and defend Mike Fires when he whistle blowed, whistle blew, whistle blowed, blew that whistle. They didn't jump on it. Then now that we're in spring training, they do. And and I want them to speak their mind. I, I think it's great that Aaron Judge and uh, Bellinger, I almost said Clay Bellinger, which is his father, Cody Bellinger and Mike Trout. Speak your mind. This is great. It's great. It's great TV. And I'm not saying it's fair. I'm not saying I support all teams using cameras to cheat. I just like I can't say, hey, go take steroids to hit baseballs farther and or actually stay healthier just so you can hit. That was primarily the reason they did it. Yeah, that ball might have gone a little farther. You still had to hit it. Steroids to me kept you in the game longer. Kept you playing longer. Kept you playing at a higher level. Turns Eric Gagne into an all-star. I remember when Gagne was a scrambling, middling uh, starting pitcher. I'm not saying I condone it. I'm just saying, wow, it's going to be interesting. And more eyes are on it. Um... See, Kyle says, all steroid-era championships are no longer valid. Um... Zach Anderson calling out Dodgers will come out of a part of it as well. I, you know, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Uh, Django's, got, I, Django's got a great idea. Let's make a new baseball league. XLB. Just, <laughs> I actually like that. Uh, actually, we got the XSFL, which I'm not really watching. I didn't watch back then, even though, I, you know, I'm a WWE fan, Vince McMahon fan, but I didn't watch it. So I think, I, I think, I, I, I think that's the big answer. Here, the Knapsack Files. That's what we're going to do. The big answer is this. Big answer is this. We are now creating the Knapsack Files Baseball League. Let's get to let's get to the rules. We'll have like eight teams to start. Just need some financial backing. We'll make it happen. Speaking of that, though, if you're in my Patreon and you're in the Discord server, I have launched a Yahoo Fantasy Baseball League, and I'm going to play with uh, some be fun. Matt Thompson has a uh, follow-up question related baseball to to baseball thoughts on Mike Bolzinger lawsuit against the Astros. Signs still see him contributing to ending his big league career. Yeah, the, and, and this is in this law. This is a player who who uh, kind of feels like, hey, the Astros knocked his balls around the park, uh, pun intended, um, and cost him his major league career. And that's part of the problem people have with it. But that's the same thing with steroids. Guys were, were juicing. Not everyone was. Guys were then going to HGH. Not everyone was. And careers were ending. It's interesting. It's fair. I, I, I think it's I think it's interesting to see it play out. That's all. All that. Be one of those suits because you go through, prove that Major League Baseball knew something, didn't do anything, affected his career. They might be liable in some way. I'm for it. Taymor says, "How much we funding? Are we how much funding are we talking, Ken? Uh, we'll uh, we'll figure that out. I don't know how, how many uh, we need. How, how much need, How much money did uh, Jeter buy the Marlins for? Half a billion or something? I don't know. Uh, we go to another question here from Alice. Alice is in chat. She's also asking this question. Ken, what did you do when you were are walking the chi, the chewies, the chewies, the chewiners, the chihuahuas that Grace and I co-own, co-raise?" And it's pouring rain. Are you trying to keep the umbrella over you and the uh, chewies? 
And so that's the nick for those who are like, what's this term? It's Chihuahua or dog. Grace calls them Chewies, and that's kind of she used to ref, uh, refer them uh, to them as so on uh, her uh, podcast, Grace and Alicia Have Lives. And I think people just pick up on it, and it's a good name, Chewies. Uh, so what do I do? Do I hold the umbrella over them? And so they don't get their toesies wet. Therefore, they are not, tech, not taking care of business. All right, this is a, this is a good question, Alice. Um, uh, Alice is here. Hey, Alice. Hell yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, so first of all, we have to be careful with chihuahuas. They are prone. You know, no surprise, maybe. They are prone to ear infections. Uh, maybe even um, other dogs are, but they are specifically and, and um, they are specifically prone to it. They got those little ears that go up, little frail little things. So they get some water, and we got even when you give them a bath, you got to be careful. We put cotton swabs in there. And they hate it. But you got to do it. So they're smart. I think they're smart. These dogs. So when they see it's raining outside, they are definitely in the we're not going. So we don't walk them outside. We don't take them little walks in the rain. Uh, but even just the simple act of going potty, or as I call it, going out for a tinks, it's a it's a it's a thing. It's a thing. Uh, not only an umbrella. I have been out there in my sweatpants and a tank top and slippers in the pouring rain, holding a baseball cap over Ratsy, all two and a half pounds of her, to keep her safe from the rain. So she can do her business. I'm not saying I'm a hero. I'm not saying I'm a hero. But I'd understand if you called me one. That's all I'm saying. Uh, so, yeah, it's an umbrella thing. And Baxter, you, uh, you, ha you pretty much have to chase them around the house and force them to go outside. And it's not a pretty thing. Brady, <laughs> Brady Dugas is here. It says, Chewies or Chewies? He says Chewies, but Chewies... See what you did there. Yes. It's not what I did. It's what Grace did. Going back to the baseball league, we're going to start now. Django's got a mango. It says a 7-Eleven sandwich for every each week for uh, each player. Uh, I like that idea. I'd play. I'd start. I'd try to dust off the old gloves there. Um, keeping with baseball, Tamor. Tamor of House Buddha out there in New York saying, hey, Ken, I hope you and your household are doing well. We are. We're actually doing really well. Here and uh, you make baseball ref references ever since I started listening to you from the afternoons and the Knapsack Files and all the shows you're on. Too many. You can say it, Tamor. Too many shows. Uh, has increased my desire to get back into the game. The time has finally come, and I've made strong intentions to get into baseball from this season onward. And and Tamor is going to be in our Yahoo Fantasy League, the Knapsack Files Invitational. Uh, that said, my question to you is, what are some of the reasons that started your love for the game and made you want to become an announcer? I, with the rest of your closed audience, which is uh, those watching live right now through Patreon, will appreciate whatever my experiences are. As always, much love to you, Grace Ratty and Baxter. Tamor is a, is a very elegant and thorough writer, uh, and I appreciate his well wishes every time. So, oh, Django says, I need to message you about that link. Yeah, you do. DM me on Discord. You'll, that's how you'll get the link to the Knapsack Files Inventational. Inventational? Inventational. Eventational? It, you know what it is. Uh, Tamor's in it. Uh, Lauren's going to be in it, too. Kind of had a lot of fun this year. So how, how did I get into baseball? Uh, at the risk of repeating anything I've said before here in the Napsack Files, I wasn't a sports kid. Dad and Mom didn't really watch sports uh, other than the Olympics. My dad and I did watch the Olympics all the time. That was a great shared memory. Um, played epics, summer games, and winter games on the Commodore 64. And for Christmas, I got my dad the Commodore 64 Mini. Looking forward to getting uh, back up to my hometown and playing. Um, but about fourth or fifth grade, my friends started collecting baseball cards. I was big into Star Wars, big into Robotech and G.I. Joe and Transformers and comic books. Not superhero comic books, but all my toy books. I, um, But my friends were collecting cards, and I was like a little, you know, curious and i had been part of the garbage pail kid craze in the 80s about 84 85 range 86 i think at two and and that was and i i remember i had a pack of garbage pail kid cards confiscated i was a i was a hero earlier for taking the chihuahuas out potty in the rain now i'm a villain an outlaw a scoundrel i had a stack of garbage pail kids cards and uh, wasn't actually wasn't the principal it was a teacher 
Mr. Mistel, I remember him, Bob Mistel. It's funny, Bob Mistel seemed like he was this old guy. He was probably 32. Uh, he came up to me and was like, you cannot have those here, and yanked them out of my hand. Yoink. Bye-bye, Garbage Pail Kids. But I still had some. I still have some of them, I think, in my, my storage at my parents' house. I have a lot of storages. Yeah, too many things. Too many things. Um, we got some sound bleeding in from that Discord server. I better shut that down right now. Um, but my, as I said, my friends were collecting baseball cards. I wanted to get into it. I started collecting cards, not really knowing anything. Football cards, too. Started uh, getting into football a little bit, rooting for the Miami Dolphins, because every one of my school is rooting for the San Francisco 49ers when they played in Super Bowl. And I just didn't know. I didn't know anything, but I was I was getting these cards. 86 tops was like the year I was buying big and, and learning this out. Then I do remember the 85 World Series. And then I, I was playing soccer, a little A A Y S O youth soccer in my hometown. And I remember going onto a baseball field. We were practicing. I remember entertaining my friends by pretending to be Cardinals pitcher John Tudor. So I knew the name. But didn't know. My dad just had it on. He just, yeah, he'd be interested. He's still kind of, everyone, if the Super Bowl's on, my dad will turn on. He's not a fan, but he'll watch. He'll catch up. And then 86, I remember the Mets winning. A year later, Gary Carter became my favorite player, but I remember Gary Carter jumping up for joy. I remember the Mets winning, and that's when I started getting in. Then I played. I was in right field, no, left field during a PE session. That's physical education at elementary school. Um, and a tennis ball. We were playing tennis ball, baseball, and a fly ball went flying out. And I was put way, way, way deep in the left field. We don't want Napsack to affect the outcome of the game. Go play at another school. That's how far back I was. And someone hit a ball really, really far, really, really high, and everyone's like, oh, no, game over. Napsack's out there, and I caught it. I caught it. I remember thinking, this is the greatest feeling in the world. Everyone's cheering. That was fun. That was not as hard as I thought. I wasn't afraid of the tennis ball. And I started to get into it. And in sixth grade, I, I met a friend of mine named Sean. Um, we kind of became friends, and, and we he was a baseball, a football obsessive like me. We're still we're st still friends. He lived in Vegas for a long time, just moved to uh, Orlando. And uh, we just started, uh, you know, talking baseball, playing baseball, playing video games, playing bases loaded on the, on the Nintendo. And that is how I became a baseball fan. Along the way, just, uh, you know, I knew I didn't have the greatest athletic skills, but I do know – sometimes how to talk into microphones and you know enjoy it so it just made sense i'll never be a baseball announcer i don't think that dream will happen but i do have the dream of announcing minor league baseball with mark ellis one day maybe we can make it happen uh maybe at least a guest announcer if you live in a town somewhere where there's like a minor league baseball team like a class a minor league baseball team let us know. Maybe me and Mark can come out and do some comedy in the area, eat at a local Mellow Mushroom or a Cheddar's, and then call an inning at the Class A, uh, you know, Myrtle Beach All-Stars or something. Uh, yeah, Django says, uh, right field is where you put the bad kids. It, this is true. I was way far out there. Um, and then so as far as announcing, yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I do get to announce with, with Mark Ellis, Schmodown. That's why I enjoy announcing on the Schmodown. Uh, it's just uh, scratches that itch. Scratch it, scratching itches is a good thing. Final pre-selected question of the day. It'll take some live questions and maybe maybe a call or two. Uh, we got this one from our friend Jeff Saunders, a.k.a. Scribbler. You also know him as Hillbilly Scribs in the movie Trivia Face-Off League, which is a fan league uh, uh, created by people passionate about the movie Trivia Schmodown. He said this, just wanted to say thank you once more. The kids are working. Their parents got a real kick out of the charity match. In this field, smiles and laughter count for so much and help so much. For me, the charity match is like a love letter to all these kiddos who are in treatment, who have finished treatment, who are no longer with us. He says, okay, starting to emote again. Thanks, Ken, and uh, thanks to me and Riley. Uh, me and Riley done good, he says. Real good. Love you guys. So, all right, so what uh, what Jeff is talking about, we've been focusing more on charity here in 2020 for the Napsack Files. Uh, you know, I just think it's a good thing to do. And so uh, Jeff works um, works with an organization called St. Baldrick's Foundation, and they help fund uh, and raise money for 
cancer, childhood cancer research. And, you know, we've, we've promoted that before. We've talked about that here before in the Knapsack Files. You can go to KenKnapsack.com and link to it from the charity spotlight page. If you're interested and can find out more information, maybe donate in a little bit. There's a lot of things. There's a lot of things to get behind in the world. A lot of things to get behind in the world. And sometimes it's okay just to find one or two that you want to put your focus into. That's just, you can't, you can't support everything, you know. Uh, but Scribbler reached out and asked if I could uh, you know, be involved in the match somehow, some way. And that was a no-brainer. It was just one of those absolutely, Mark Riley, I know, had the same reaction. So we're, we were honored to do it, honored to be a part of it, humbled to be a part of it, to, to raise any kind of awareness. With our, our limited audiences, uh, it's a pleasure. So Scribs is the best, says Lauren Roma out there in chat. And this is a fact. This is a fact. So uh, if you want, like I said, you can watch the match. Uh, we'll probably uh, put a, a link down here in the description on the video. Um, you can watch, link to it from the St. Baldrick's Foundation page. And again, consider a donation. And if if donating's not for you, or maybe you can't, there's sometimes that's sometimes the reality. Do I donate to a foundation or go get myself some food because I don't have enough money to choose? These are sometimes options we all face in real life, myself included. But if you can't donate right now, consider it. If you can't, spread the word. Spread the word on St. Baldrick's Foundation uh, on Charity Match. Let's get some eyes and ears on it and kind of raise awareness, like Jeff said, for those kids who are going through treatment, who have gone through treatment, and and even more so f for the children who are no longer with us to to honor their memory and, and then maybe stop that, prevent that, delay that from happening to other children. So Hillbilly Scribs is here. Look at Hillbilly Scribs. He's lurking in the background, and he's a great guy. I had the chance to meet uh, Hillbilly Scribs out in Houston. Houston show, I do believe. Yeah. And just such a warm individual. And this is what I love about TNF in session. I'll be doing, just so everyone's aware, programming note, I'll be doing more on my YouTube channel shortly that's more general live stream, stream stuff. Um, just was on the Wanger show the other night. They went live with their show. A lot of fun. And it is a lot of fun. Been on Riley's Cantina. Um, you know, Roxy's doing it. Roxy's Rock, doing it. Of course, SCN's doing it. Collider Live is doing it. Uh, I was there back in the day for Screen Junkies when we were, you know, going live for the first time. Schmoes. 2012, it's the first time I experienced live stream broadcasting, and it's exciting. And quite frankly, I don't want to be left behind on this movement, so we're going to do it. Me and my low-tech ways, I'm going to try to fix the delay a little bit. There's a little delay, a little delay. Uh, I don't know how I can. I, I don't know anything. I did get a mouse recently. I like that mouse. See, I can do things like this with the mouse. Zach Anderson says, a lot of fun on Monday with the Wangers. It's always fun with Wangers. I mean, it's always fun being on the Wanger show. Um, so that's something. But I love doing this, TNF in session. If you're listening on the podcast later and, and maybe you're like, hey, you know, this is a different feeling, a different vibe to the show. I like it when Ken does three things or like when he interviews. Understood. The NASDAQ Files feed is, is admittedly all over the place. I've talked about this before. It's admittedly all over the place. It's just me. It's my journey. It's my adventure. And I hope you guys are along for the ride. But TNF in session allows me to, to really get to know the people that invest in me on Patreon. And it means a lot. And so when I met Hellboy Scribs in Houston, he's just such a warm guy. Just so quiet and humble. And he, do, he does important work. I talk into a $40 camera. You know, he's working with uh, kids suffering from cancer, trying to bring joy to their life, trying to bring um, healing to their life, cures to their life. That's That's... That's the real work. Heroes go me taking the dogs out potty in the rain, scribbler, uh, first responders, and uh, anyone who works at Metal Mushroom. But that's the heroes list to me. Right? Right? I think so. Uh, all right. Um, so that's uh, the pre-selected questions, which means now if anyone out there watching, watching live, uh, we got about... Uh, Five ten. No, we got 15 minutes left in the show, and then I have some errands. I have some errands. I've been working hard on a project. I can't wait. Oh, hey, look. Zori's over in the corner for me here. Hi, Zori. Um, I've been working on a cool project. I'm, I'm, I'm around the corner in the, in the bend on it. 
Uh, you'll all be able to officially hear about it soon. I'm not going to reveal it here. Um, it's not super secret. I just don't know. It's not my, I'm just writing this project and a lot of fun. So I've been working really, really, really hard. And uh, that means I've been following, follow, following, following, following. I can't talk today. Falling behind on my Patreon page and a lot of my commitments and things I'm doing there. So I want to thank anyone who's listening, who is a supporter. And you're like, hey, I think I get a postcard soon. You'll get it. I'm staring right now over at the stack of envelopes I got from Staples. Going to get back on it, but I've had a lot of fun. I mean, we're talking yesterday. I sat down on my couch with my laptop, my MacBook, whatever you want to say. I do have a laptop now, you know, thanks to my supporters as well. Um, sat down with my MacBook about 10 a.m. Was not done. Yeah, you get up and you have some food and you go outside and take the dog's potty, but did not leave the couch from 10 a.m. to 11.30 last night working on the uh, final episode of this project I'm on. And that's a lot of hard, that's hard work, but it's it's so fulfilling and so fun. And I want any of you out there listening to know that you can get to your professional goals too because I'm, I'm finally hitting some of mine. It's been a lot of fun. And if I can do it, this schlub can do it. You do it. All right, some questions. Let's go to some live questions. Orn Romo says, do you think we'll learn what the business was on Cato Nemodia in season seven of Clone Wars? Yeah, so that's a reference to what Anakin and Obi Wan, but wasn't that an Attack of the Clones or Revenge of the Sith? Can't remember now. I thought it was Attack of the Clones. There was something that Obi Wan's uh, that, that that business on Cato Nemodia doesn't count. So I don't know if we'll get that. Uh, maybe we won't get it in season seven of Clone Wars. Maybe we'll get it in a standalone comic. the The comic will be titled Star Wars: The Business on Cato Nemodia. We'll see that. Uh, old Hansa says, not a question. Breaking news. Just want to tell Alice how good my pizza is. So Lawrence says, Revenge of the Sith. So yeah, maybe maybe we will. Maybe we will. I did reread the opening of the Ahsoka novel by E.K. Johnstone last night. Real good reminder. It's a quick read. The book is great if you haven't. Uh, I don't think you have time to get it to it before the Clone Wars starts. Um, but um, gonna, oh, we're going to get a call. Look at this. Let's go. Let's do this call. Where is it? We're live on air. This is what happens when you're live on air. I'm clicking. I'm clicking the button. I'm clicking the button. That's what she said. That was weird. So whoever was calling me, I apologize. I don't know what was going on there. I was clicking the button. I feel like a grandpa. I was quick. I was clicking the button. I was clicking the button work i don't know i don't know look at that look at that hmm it's weird we can try again here it comes again it's not popping up on my screen that's what the problem is i'm clicking some old button that's weird everybody this is it the show's live you just what did I, listen, I listened to Ken try desperately to answer a phone call. It's just not popping up. It's not now. I'm just doing work. Huh? That is weird. All right. Sorry, everybody. Doesn't look like. Uh. Doesn't look like uh, the calls are working. <laughs> now it's just gonna keep going. Usually it pops up on my screen. Did a pop-up get blocked? I don't know. All right, everybody. I know, newfangled technology. Yeah, Tamar, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not letting me answer. Usually a Google voice message when um when it pops up. Yeah, I don't know. I mean yeah, Tamor, Tamor, we're we're live on the air, everybody, and we're trying to figure this out. I don't know why it's it's like kind of going directly to uh, it's like voicemail. All right, well, we're gonna we're gonna shut that down. Sorry, no calls today. I don't know, I don't know what's happening. 
This has been a gripping, gripping uh, uh, segment of the show. Django says, do we need to start sending you letters? Sure. Do that. That feeling went indeed. Zach Anderson says, this darn new fangled technology. All right, maybe we get some more questions. Uh, <laughs> prank call. Tamor's like, I just tried four times. Yeah, it, we could hear it. Yeah, I did this hung up on Tamor. All right, Tamor, what, what question were you going to ask? Uh, technology man indeed, says Brady. Yeah, we'll have to do a, we'll have to do a test. All right, well, let's get back on the show. Any, anyone in, in the chat have any live questions here on a very weird live edition of TNN and TNN uh, TNF? I don't even know my show anymore. TNF in session. Um, Taymor had this question. I remember very well that your favorite team is the New York Yankees in baseball, as you mentioned time and time again. Yes, I do. Ad nauseum. Um, Oops. Uh, that's the one I wanted up. What other teams are my favorites or do I like to follow? In baseball? Uh, his follow-up is, and it's worth it to follow all teams, just focus on what you're interested in. Uh, I follow baseball as a whole. Um, Yankees now more than anything uh, baseball. Um, but I, growing up, I was a big fan of the Montreal Expos, big fan of the New York Mets. And over time, I did not like the Dodgers. The Yankees uh, have a rivalry with them that goes back a number of decades. But when I moved to L.A., over time, been to enough Dodger games. And then Don Manley joined the Dodgers uh, coaching staff, became their manager. And Donnie's one of my favorite baseball players for the Yankees. So I couldn't help but start kind of uh, rooting for the Dodgers. So there you go. Alice says, Ken always makes me laugh. Well, good. Me trying to answer... A cell phone uh, call uh, should be entertaining. Django's, uh, or Lawrence says this, if someone, what, where, where'd that go? Uh, Lawrence says, if someone wants to mail, uh, send a baseball cap to you, what size would one get asking for a friend? I have a pretty large cranium. So uh, my hat size, if it's fitted, is seven and five eighths. Pretty big. I occasionally shops will have to special order hats from a big old cranium. Um, fitted hats are usually the best, so yeah, that's usually the size. Uh, Zach Anderson saying, who are some of the players that could either have a break a year or bounce back year? Oh, man. Um, I'll have to look at that. I, Zach, I'm not in that kind of baseball mind today. I, got to, I have to look it up. We'll, we'll get to that behind the bag with me and Dagnino as we start looking at the season. As we start looking at the season. Um, Tamor loved Mike Piazza, which is fitting for a conversation today about pizza. Um, Django's got this question. Django's got a mango asks, what Star Wars character would you most like to have a Lego minifigure of? And can I send you one or you don't have space for things? I am running out of space. I am really running out of space, plain and simple. But in terms of minifigs, um, gosh, I, I, you know. I usually go get the ones that I like. Um, I, I just got a Zori Bliss one the other day with the uh, Y wing mini set. So any any uh, you know I have a I do have an Amaratus finally I got that. Oh Griff Halloran I don't have Griff Halloran. Uh, Stephen Stanton's character from um, Star Wars Resistance. That's one I and I've I've seen it in the shot. I've, I've done the reach for it on the shelf and been like oh can't do that. Can't do that. Um, big um. I'm teaching a class on broadcasting soon to kids. I'm gonna first lesson. Don't worry about saying um. Jonas Berger it's his favorite Swedish band or artist. That's where Jonas is writing from. Uh, you can't choose Roxette or Abba. Well, then I'm out. I'm out because I'm probably not familiar with this, any Swedish bands by name, but I probably heard some of them. So Jonas, your task, and you don't necessarily need to do it here. Your task is to teach me. Swedish bands that you like via uh, Patreon. You're you're going to make me a virtual uh, uh, mixtape so that I know how to answer that. Uh, in the meantime, I'm just going to go with Roxette. Uh, scrolling back down here to catch up with some of the questions that was going on here. Oh, I got I got where did I go? I got way ahead of those questions. <clears throat> 
Uh, old Handsaw says, uh, musician biopics have been a thing lately. Uh, can you think of any comedians worthy of a new biopic? Yeah, I'd like, um, I'd like go into a little bit more of Saturday Night Live in the 80s, early 90s. Give me more on that. Give me more on Dana Carvey, Phil Hartman, Mike Myers, behind the scenes back during that era. I like, I like a lot of that stuff there. That'd be nice for me. Brady says, just think about getting a voice of work ever, ever done some of that. Um, I, yeah, no, I have thought about it. It's, it's really hard. Um, you have to really be dedicated to it. And I don't necessarily have the acting chops to do it. Voice, voice, voiceover character work is just straight acting. Uh, and I'm not that great at that, but classic kind of doing this kind of stuff. Even though I don't have a big voice. I don't have a big enough voice for that though. Um, a lot of voiceover stuff is not that. They don't want that. They don't want the cheeseburger from Carl's Jr. is the best. They want, hey, that cheeseburger is pretty good. You should have it. So we'll see. You have to take classes. You have to get into it. Uh, I, th I have thought about it. I, I had a lot of fun doing the voiceover uh, during, the, during the narration of my audio book, being in the booth and everything. And it sounds so different. It sounds so different than even here. So, yeah, I would like to do it. Um, just not right now. Jango's going to make us says like the announcer on the Clone Wars, Tom Kane. Yeah. Um, old Hanson selects a, a Carlin one based on his daughter's book. Yeah, that could be interesting. Jonas has got to sleep now. Later, Jonas, says Pete Rich. Jonas says, I got to sleep, friends. See ya. We're almost out of here to uh, right now. Uh, trying to think um, if I've missed any questions, you can re ask them. As we, uh, the chat here on StreamYard is great because I can bring in the names, but then they slide up really fast. So that's it. We're almost done for this week. It's been a lot of fun recording, despite the fact that the phone calls just didn't work. I don't know what, I'm really bummed about that. You could probably see it on my face if you're watching live or watching later on the video. You can just kind of see my head kind of hang. I like talking. I like talking with y'all. Uh, Lauren Romo says, uh, has a question. What uh, 2020 movies are you looking forward to seeing in theater? I don't know. I don't, yeah. Black Widow looks pretty cool. Wonder Woman looks cool. Yeah, that's about, yeah. I don't know what movies are coming out. Uh, Clone Wars Season 7, does that count? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I'm I feel as though I'm disappointing you, Lauren. Uh, we'll see. I'll just, I used to. Back in the day, I used to. I used to get the Entertainment Weekly and the premiere magazines and i'd sit down oh summer movie season preview what are the 29 movies i'm gonna see i kind of miss that sometimes yeah like i said watch fighting with my family movie's been out a year and i knew i wanted to see it it's a movie i absolutely wanted to see produced by Dwayne the rock johnson who i love written and directed by stephen merchant who i love bbc's the office his hbo show was really good too uh, Florence P is stars in it, uh, but beyond that, she's playing Paige, Soraya Knight, who's a, is a real life person, a real life wrestler. I'm a fan of. Like, I want to see this story. And, and Cersei Lannister's in it. What's the, you know, Nick Frost? What's not the? I didn't see it in theater. I didn't see. It, I just never. I just never did it. And it, and it was like, oh, I'm going to. It was like a case of. I am going to see that next week, and then I didn't see it for a year until I watched it at home. I don't know. It's just me. Tommy Tara Green says, uh, what movie have you missed in theaters you wish you could see on the big screen? Oh, I'll tell you. Fellowship of the Ring. Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Ring. Didn't see it in theaters. I was like, Dah, I don't I don't really, I've never read the books. I don't, uh, I don't, uh, I don't think I'll watch that. And I talked about uh, at the top of the show about how sometimes I just have a, I have a feeling of the things that I like or will like. I missed I missed that one completely. I was stubborn. I get that a lot too. Pee Wee's Big Adventure. My parents had rented Pee Wee's Big Adventure. You got to sit down and watch this. I was like, mm. I was ten, but I was like, mm, no, I don't think I'm. Watch it the next day. It changed my life. You know. So sometimes I'm too stubborn for my own good. Don't tell anyone I said that. So, yeah. Uh, oh, and then some of you are making me feel real old. By Django's Django's got a mango. Says too young for Lord of the Rings when it came out. Uh, yeah, Tommy Dare, Tommy Terry Green says I didn't film traumatized me as a kid. Yeah, I just I saw Two Towers, uh, Fellowship of the Ring. So I wish 
Still to this day, I could have seen that on the big screen and experienced it. Don't be too stubborn, kids. I'm telling you, don't do that. Don't do that. All right, we are almost out of here. This has been TNF In Session, the uh, 10th episode. Thanks for listening. Thanks for being here. Uh, it's just some uh, housekeeping things to do. I want to thank the executive producer, Tier. Uh, the supporters here on Patreon. There's a lot of supporters to thank. This is why uh, eventually I just kind of cut it down to this wonderful list of investors in my uh, business, and that's Thomas Risling, Lethal Logan X, Bedore, Kyle Harlow. Kyle, out there, we're thinking of you out there. Uh, Matt Thompson, who got to uh, watch tonight, uh, even though we didn't have dinner before him. Tay Morris, Brother Abdul, Brother Rafa, they're out there in New York. Uh, also, uh, Nathan Ovendale, he's a first rate Nate. Zach Anderson, who's in chat. My friend Ty Schallenberger, uh, Lomi, Chad Benefield, Tommy Terry Green, and Jonas Bergren, who uh, recently upgraded, and I forgot to update my list. I keep a, I, I could go to Patreon and get an actual list, but I, I, for some reason, keep another list, and I always forget to update that list. So if your name's on there, and it's supposed to be on there, and I uh, didn't do it, uh, that's on me. That's on me. That's on me. Uh, just let me know because I don't want you to get credit. Uh, executive producer supporters on uh, the Knapsack Files get in my Ken Knapsack Patreon. Patreon page. Do get access to me uh, for some some cult, some consulting if you need it. Don't forget to take advantage of that. We got a lot of things on there. Uh, go to patreon.com slash kinapsock to select the tier that you like the most. Um, don't forget, we also got st great stuff going over on Force Center. Me, Joseph, and Jennifer getting ready for Clone Wars Season 7. A lot more stuff to talk about uh, when that uh, finally hits. That's a lot of fun. And uh, also, I uh, want to remind you, my book, Why We Love Star Wars, is out there. It's available in German. It's it's available in German if you like to. Check out the audio book. If you think I should get into voiceover, uh, check out the audio book and let me know what you think. And then finally, uh, March 6th, just a couple weeks away, I'll be in Las Vegas, Friday, March 6th, for a 7 p.m. show at the House of Blues in Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, Mark Ellis will be headlining, of course, because he's awesome and talented and a great comic. And he's bringing along me and Josh McCuga, my afternoon's co-host, who is also the co-host of the new show, Eating History, coming out March 11th. We're going to be talking about that. So we're almost out of here, everybody. It's been a lot of fun doing this. Sorry about those phone calls not working. But hey, you know what? Such is life. That's what happens. This is why we just do things live. Boop, we'll do it live. That's the thing. So that is it for this week. Thanks for everyone takes the time to listen check out that charity movie trivia face-off match the link will be in the description of the video put it out on twitter as well thanks to scribbler and st baldrick's foundation for putting that together we'll see you all next time bye